In this episode of Viral Rewind, we're going to revisit a previous piece of malware that we looked at, the Pikachu email worm. Now, I will say it has been quite a while because it's been more than a year since I last put anything out on the Viral Rewind series and, of course, other things as well on, on this channel. And, of course, a whole bunch of things have happened between then and now and they're still kind of ongoing, but hopefully now, after some things have calmed down and everything, I can get back to putting these videos out on a weekly basis or at least what I can at least get them out. So, anyway, we're revisiting the Pikachu email worm here because I've recently, a couple months back, been able to set up the computers now to be able to work with handling the email subroutines of these pieces of malware using a little program called Mercury32, which is right here, basically kind of an email server application. And I've set it up so that it can be able to send and receive email locally on the machine here. And I've linked it up with Microsoft Outlook, as we can see here, and I've got four separate mailboxes all with aliases of pretty much my YouTube channel names. So I've got four different inboxes here, all with separate email addresses. And I've been sending test messages back and forth to each other. So you can see that there's test at localhost.com, and then there's test2, test3, and test4 all at localhost.com. So those are our email addresses slash aliases that are going to be used for testing our email worms. So anyway, for a brief overview of the Pikachu email worm, because I've already done a video on it before that goes in depth of what it is, it's an email worm that you get through an email message that's, that the piece of malware is attached to, and you get it from somebody that has sent the email to you because they had been infected with the Pikachu email worm on their machine and sent it to all the addresses in their Outlook address book. And so you end up getting it and then you run it and then it takes all the addresses out of your Microsoft Outlook, sends it to all of them with an attached and then the other thing it tries to do is just very discreetly try to modify your autoexec.bat file to delete both your root C directory files, but also all the files in your Windows directory, but it fails to do so because it does not set up the deletion method correctly. Again, this is all in the video of it done originally. So here we're just focusing on the email spreading routine. So I've got Mercury32 loaded up here, and we're going to try to monitor the windows. Let's see if I can get them tiled. So we can see the traffic that's getting sent over the local host here when we run the Pikachu email worm. And you can see there's already some traffic happening because Outlook is refreshing the inboxes of my email addresses there. So, and the other thing I didn't show, and I don't remember if I did or not, the original file name of the Pikachu email worm is PikachuPokemon.exe. So, run this here, bring up that, and you see over here we got some traffic that went through, and we see we got test messages, so we got messages sent to all four of my test aliases, so test, test2, test3, and test4, so Pikachu has sent messages through those, and of course this is the pop-up it gives you to try to hide both its email spreading routine and its modification of autoexec.bat. Now if we go to Outlook and maximize this and go to one of our other inboxes, we see we have a new message. It says it's from me, so it's from the test at localhost.com, which would be our first one there. Subject is Pikachu Pokemon, and it has an attachment on it. Let's open it. So as here we see it says from my name there, test at localhost.com. So whatever your primary email account is on Outlook, that's where it's going to send its emails from. 
And again, subject Pikachu Pokemon, and then here's our message. Great friend. Pikachu from Pokemon Thing have some friendly words to say. Visit Pikachu at http colon forward slash forward slash www.pikachu.com. See you. And then here is our attached file, which we just ran from the desktop there. Pikachu Pokemon dot exe. And of course, if you run that if from the email that you receive, well then of course, as I told you, you will run the Pikachu email worm on your machine, get infected with it, and of course you'll send it to all the people in your address book and try to have your files deleted as well. That's really all there is to it. Now there is one minor thing with the Pikachu email worm. Let's see here. Because the Pikachu email worm is one of those email worms that doesn't have any kind of error correcting capability to know if its file name has been changed or not. Because it expects Pikachu Pokemon.exe to be the file on the machine that you get. Because if it's not, it will just send the email, but it will not attach itself. So let's just change this to Pikachu. exe yes let me try running it again here I don't think it ran the spreading routine that time oh no yes it did we just got a whole bunch more another set of messages sent all right let's look in another directory oh and there it is again but look at the attachment it's missing you see because it was looking for Pikachu Pokemon dot exe and it didn't find it it assumes it doesn't exist and thus it does not attach it to the email that it sends out so if it was not called uh, Pokemon Pikachu or Pikachu Pokemon which one is it called Pikachu Pokemon then it won't attach it to the message so it needs to have the correct file name that the email worm spreading routine is looking for to attach it to the message. Otherwise, it would just simply not attach it, just sends the email. So that is pretty much it for this little revisit of the Pikachu email worm.